Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about how to do uh, token-based security in the REST API that we've been building up over previous videos. So here's what we're going to look at. Quick look at what we've done already. A uh, little bit of explanation about what I mean by token-based security. Uh, and then straight into the code. Uh, how to write the login code, how to write the normal code that, that uses a token in authentication. Uh, things that aren't done yet. Uh, and then a bit of discussion about uh, why we would do this at all. Um, and where you can find out more. So, first off, uh, what have we done so far? Well, if you look back for uh, previous videos, uh, you'll see we've been building up a REST API. Uh, it's implemented in Python with web.py, um, really just because that's the clearest um, code I could find to explain the concepts. Um, we're making a uh, a website uh, that hold that has that give, stores and displays poems similar to what YouTube does for videos, but for poems. And we're doing it API first, and then when we build the website, we can use the same functionality we've already built up for the API. Hopefully, that means that the API will end up being complete. Um, at least when we start making the website, we'll realise what we missed out of the API. Uh, at the moment, we can list things. Uh, search for things, retrieve things, and modify things. Um, and we've added security, which means you're only allowed to modify your own poems. Um, and you're only allowed to post a poem when you're logged in. Okay, so today we're going to try and add token-based security. So what is token-based security? Well, uh, with the security we've implemented so far, every request you make to the API includes your username and password. With uh, token-based security, you make a request using your username and password uh, and as a result of that request a cookie is stored on the client machine which means which acts as proof that you are who you say you are that you have supplied a username and password in some previous request um, so next time you make a request you provide the cookie instead of the username and password and that proves who you are to the server um, and this proof um, is basically a hard to guess um, number or string uh, and so part of that being hard to guess is that it needs to expire at some point otherwise if you keep guessing forever presumably you will eventually get it so it has to expire which means you'll need to get another token at some future point okay so how will it work in our API well we've been using curl to uh, talk to our poem server so here's the changes that we need to make to our um, curl calls in order to do it the new way so um, in order to tell curl save your cookies into this file you do minus c uh, as one of the arguments and we're storing the cookies in a file called c.txt and we need to go to a different uh, url so we've got a different url to log in and get yourself a token uh, that url ends with login instead of with poems um, and all that does is sets this cookie assuming that your username and password were correct and then when we're making a normal request, in order to make use of the token that we've stored, we need to do minus B, which tells curl, uh, read this cookies file and use it. Uh, once we've read that, we no longer need to provide the username and password in that second curl command and any future curl commands. We can just supply the, the cookie that we've created. Um, okay, so here's some code for that login uh, uh, location that new location we've made which ends with slash login so we've got a class that implements this in the normal web.py way and it has a method called get so when a get request comes in to the login uh, location this is what happens so first thing it does is it calls the function we've already provided called require authenticated user we used that in the uh, in the poems uh, area before um, and what that does is checks that the request contains um, the correct a correct username and password and returns the username uh, and the username uh, won't be none in this case because we've called this require authenticated user function which um, will throw if you are not a, uh, a, a genuine user so you didn't provide a decent username and password uh, so once we've got that user we then uh, create a token by calling a function called generate token that we'll look at in a second. Once we've got that token, this is this hard to guess thing, 
Um, we have to store it ourselves so that when someone comes back saying, here's my token, we know uh, whether or not it's a valid token. So what we do is we we have a, a new section in our database. Uh, this is something like CouchDB or, or, or in-memory database or something. Uh, or, you know, even it could be implemented by a relational database in the back end. But we, um, the interface we're using is that we just treat it like a map. So there's this thing called db.tokens. Uh, and we can add a new entry into our database with a key of token uh, and a value which just gives the, the username, uh, puts it in an object, user colon, um, to make it uh, compatible with the way you get stuff out of CouchDB. Um, but basically, we're making a map which is keyed on these hard to guess things. So if someone comes in with a fake token, when we look up in the map, their token won't refer to anything, we know it's not real. So further down in the same function, uh, now that we've made the token, we've stored it ourselves in our database, we're ready to send it back to the, um, the user. So the way we do that in web.py is we use this web.set cookie, uh, and we give it the name authentication underscore token, uh, put the token in, and then we set an expiry on it. And I really don't know what the right expiry for this is. It definitely should be shorter than the amount of time it takes us to expire the token on the server and say that token is no longer valid. Um, but I guess it depends on your uh, usage, how long you, you want to make this token last on the client machine. Um, if this is going to be used on a public computer, it shouldn't last very long at all. Um, uh, if this isn't very important, uh, the security of this application isn't that important. Uh, maybe it could last a month or so. Uh, and then we set the um, HTTP status to 204 no content, which means this request, we're not going to send back any um, response, except for obviously for this cookie that we've set in the headers, but the actual body of the response is going to be empty, and that's normal and good. Um, Okay, so we, we skipped over the generate token function. So here it is. Unfortunately, I'm not going to solve all your problems for you. Um, you need to use a cryptographically secure uh, random number generation function in this generate token function. I'm very deliberately not attempting to do that in case I get it wrong. I'm making a random number between one between zero and a thousand and turning it into a string. Um, you'll need to do something much cleverer than that. Uh, if someone tried this a thousand times, they would definitely be able to guess your token. So yeah, go and uh, read about cryptographically secure random number generators. Or write one. Don't write one. Um, okay, uh, and then in a normal request, uh, uh, we will come into this authenticate user function. So uh, this is uh, when you're when you're looking when you want to list some poems or uh, edit a poem or something like that, um, the the code will call authenticate user, and we've changed how authenticate user works so that it, it can also use a token. So first thing is to get the token out of the request. So we do web.cookies.get authentication token, and then we say find me the user based on this token by calling this authenticate token function, and then if that user is a valid user. Um, then return that user. Let's move me out of the way. If that user is a valid user, um, I it, the authenticate token function didn't return none. Then we just return the username of that user um, because that's authenticate user just returns the username if it finds a valid user. Um, and then it, if authenticate token in some way didn't work. Um, it will return none to say uh, I didn't find a user. Uh, so then this we will then go on in this function to the normal implementation of this function, um, which looks for a username and password in the request. Okay, so here's authenticate token. If the token passed in is none, as in there wasn't a cookie set in the request, we just return none. There's no. Uh, there's no token, so it's not a valid token. And then we look in in the database for um, 
a key with this token value. So as you remember, I said that the database was, we just viewed it as a map with keys and the tokens were the keys. Well, we look it up in the map. If it's there, we return the username that we stored. If it's not there, we return none, meaning uh, that token doesn't identify the user. Okay, so that's basically all the code. Have a look at the um, blog post uh, linked from the show notes of this video. Um, and you should find your way to the GitHub repository with the full code, um, which might make it clearer, especially if you're seeing this video without watching the others, you might not understand how this code fits in. Um, have a look on GitHub for the, the full details. Uh, stuff that's not done in this code, uh, as you saw, generating a genuine secure token um, that is genuinely hard to guess and hard enough to guess for your application and your expiry times. Speaking of expiry times, um, I haven't implemented the fact that tokens expire, which is deeply insecure and absolutely necessary because the whole point of making something hard to guess is uh, how hard to guess it is. Um, no, that's not really true. The whole point of making something hard to guess is uh, eventually someone might be able to guess it and you need to take away that possibility by making it run out and not, no longer be useful before they've had time to guess enough times. Uh, of course, if you limit the number of times they can guess against your server, that might help you. Um, uh, as mentioned before, I haven't really thought about cookie expiry, but it obviously should be less than or equal to the length of time um, a token lasts. Other things you should definitely think about. Um, you should set the secure um, option. I don't know what the right word is. You should set, you should set secure for your cookie. What that means is that uh, this cookie will not be passed um, unless the, this is an HTTPS request. So this um, this cookie containing this token um, is a security sensitive piece of information uh, that uh, that gives you access to our application as if you were you'd logged in. Um, so you need to make sure that that only gets sent over HTTPS uh, or over SSL because if someone's listening in to a normal HTTP request, they can steal that token and use it themselves. So if you set the secure flag on your token, on your cookie, uh, the, uh, then well-behaved clients won't send that cookie unless you have an HTTPS connection. And the other thing you should set on your cookie, um, which I couldn't find out how to do in web.py, uh, the secure one I could find out how to do, but I haven't actually implemented my demo version as HTTPS, so I couldn't set it. Um, but the HTTP only flag I couldn't see how to set in web.py, maybe there's a way. Um, what that does, what that says, it, it sets um, a property on that cookie, which means a web browser will refuse to let some JavaScript or something like that read the contents of that cookie. Uh, the only thing that JavaScript or anything else can do with that cookie is send it with a request with an HTTP request. So that prevents some kinds of um, malicious script getting hold of that, the token. Um, and, and another unresolved question is, should you be allowed to use a valid token to make yourself a new token? So the code as it's implemented at the moment, the code that checks whether you've got a valid token and considers you a valid user is shared by both the login page and the, um, the poems page. So what that means is if you've got a valid token, you can go to the login page and get yourself another valid token. Uh, maybe that's good because maybe then clients um, won't need to store the username and password. They, they can just keep on renewing tokens from time to time. On the other hand, what it means is if someone steals one token, um, they've got, uh, they can keep on renewing it and they've got access forever. Whereas if you, if you force an actual username and password to be passed in order to get a token, then stealing a token only gives you access for a certain amount of time. Um, so by allowing a token to, to make you another token, we're essentially making the token as good as stealing the username or password, which maybe takes away the whole point of the process. So we should definitely think about that. So final question, why would we do all this? Why would we complicate our code, require ourselves to use cryptography, which is fundamentally hard to understand for me. Uh, why is doing this better than passing username and password with every request? Well, the main pro is that if someone's listening in somehow, 
they don't get your password. Uh, another pro, if you're working in the browser, is that um, username and password get cached by the browser and automatically resupplied when you make another request. So there's no way of, no cross black browser way of telling a browser to stop doing that or to forget those details. So it's sort of impossible to log out if you're using HTTP authentication. Whereas if you've got a token that's expired, um, yeah, uh, then you can you can expire it manually by saying log out, and that can uh, and then that can send you to a login page, and you can avoid this problem. But things that are, are bad about uh, doing this, as opposed to just passing username and password with every request, well, the implementation is a little bit more complicated, and if you want to make sure it's absolutely secure, you've got to be careful about it. Um, it's harder for the user to use. You'll notice that we had to make two requests and learn about the annoying cookies, flags, and curl um, to be able to use it. Of course, in a browser, that's all done for you, so it won't be it won't be any harder for someone who's in the browser. Um, and basically, uh, any client that uses this um, token system is almost certainly going to have to store the username and password anyway to deal with when a token expires. So the username and password is still going to get stored on the client. The only thing that's not happening is they're not getting passed with your requests. But if you're using HTTPS, everyone knows that's 100% secure. Uh, no one ever puts any bugs in their OpenSSL implementations. Um, so it's fine. As for this series, I think I've got just one video left uh, to make, which is... Um, how we could do um, this kind of security stuff using an external security provider using OpenID. So, see you next time.